So um, what I will tell you about today is uh, a new algorithm that we have developed uh, during the last four years, uh, dubbed float stepper, and it's an algorithm uh, meant to solve what is called the added mass instability problem, something we often see in coupling between rigid bodies and incompressible fluids in CFD simulations. So for instance, uh, think of an offshore uh, floating wind turbine like the one shown here. That's the kind of problem we want to, uh, to work with. The method has, uh, was dubbed flood, float stepper because it was a product of a, a, a project called Float Step, uh, funded by Innovation Fund Denmark, um, with, the, with the purpose of bringing uh, floating wind from proof of concept stage to early commercial stage. And the way we wanted to do that was to develop uh, new uh, numerical models and also perform physical uh, model tests. So uh, the, the main partner in the project was DTU, Technical University of Denmark, and the, the model tests were done uh, at DHI, uh, former Danish Hydraulic Institute. And then one of the very interesting partners is Steesdale Offshore Technology. They have invented this uh, new floater concept called Tetraspar, which is essentially a tetrahedral uh, steel structure that's ballasted with a heavy keel, also steel filled with concrete and then hanging in these wires, uh, I think around 80 meters down in the water column. And so that has been sort of our case uh, floater for, for, this, uh, for this project. Um, my company Strömning's role in this project has been to um, try to improve the six degree of freedom uh, um, fluid or hydrodynamics coupling in, uh, in open foam where we experience this added mass instability as, a, as quite a, uh, a nuisance. Um, and um, let's just jump into this, what this added mass instability is. Um, so let's look at a very, very simple example here. Suppose we have a circular disc with density 0 0.5 and uh, surrounded uh, by a fluid has, which has the double density, and then we have gravity pointing downwards. Then if this is an ideal fluid and it's infinite, we can calculate quite easily that it should have a constant acceleration, which in this case should be a third. So it should just yeah, steadily increase its velocity upwards like this. If we try to do that with the current uh, schemes in open foam, then what we, at least sometimes, if we're not cautious, see something like this, it's almost as if the body and fluid get into a fight and keep injecting energy into each other and eventually they, they, um, uh, the whole simulation explodes. This is the pressure field I show here. Um, so this is an intrinsic problem and there are methods to come around this in open foam. You can do outer correctors on your, on your piezo loop. You can do acceleration relaxation, but these are sort of uh, duct tape. Uh, what we want to do here is try to really, really solve the problem is completely eradicate the added mass instability. And we sort of looked into the algorithm and seen where exactly do we get, uh, where does it arise this problem? And um, I will tell you that now, and then also show what in a nutshell, uh, the, the float step uh, method that solves this, solves this problem is. Um, the main problem is this thing. So we take the Newton's second law, uh, if uh, equals M uh, times A, and then from that we, try to get the acceleration of our floating body uh, as the force divided by the body mass. And that's wrong, we know from theoretical uh, hydrodynamics, because we know that the force term here, it contains a lot of things, we, let's call them if other, anything else. And then we have a term that's proportional to the acceleration, the instantaneous acceleration, and that constant of pro proportionality is what we refer to as the added mass. So if we are to plug this guy into this force into our uh, uh, Newton's second law and find uh, properly find the acceleration, then what we find is that um, the, ex the real acceleration will be if other. So think of if other as anything but what is proportional to acceleration uh, in our force term and then divided by the body mass plus that added mass. So we uh, note that here, if we set the body mass to zero, then this diverges. Here it doesn't because we have the, the added mass as well. So why don't we do this in CFD simulations? 
Well, that's because typically we do not know what if other and MA are. Um, but in CFD, and that's the main point of, of float stepper, we can do whatever we want before we take our uh, initial, uh, or before we take our actual time step. So why don't we try to measure these two guys? Uh, and the way we'll do that is to first take a virtual time step, so not a real time step with zero acceleration of the body, and then measure the fluid force response. We will call that F0. That's just, in simple cases, just the pressure integrated over the body. Um, now, if we look at what we should get according to our equation one here, then we can see A is zero. Then this must, what we just measured, F0, must be equal to F other, so everything else. Okay, that's great. So now we got one of the quantities we actually needed. Then the next step is we take another virtual time step with uh, some finite uh, non-zero acceleration. Let's call it A tilde. And then we, measure, then we measure the fluid response force in this virtual time step. Let's call it F tilde. And then we can plug this into our equation one. F tilde equals F other minus MA times A tilde. But here, the only thing we don't know is MA. So if you isolate MA here, then we actually have the second quantity that we didn't know to calculate a proper acceleration. And then now it's just a matter of plugging these two guys into, uh, into our acceleration uh, expression, integrating that in time to get velocity and position of the body, use that to get for the boundary conditions of, of our fluid, for instance, pressure and velocity uh, calculation. And then that is taking our real time step with a real added mass. So we have, um, we have tried to implement this in open foam and oh my God, did I learn a lot of programming uh, uh, by trying to do this. It's, it's really hard to implement stuff in open foam uh, when you're not a, a, a software engineer by education. But um, we sort of uh, succeeded. Uh, how pretty it is, I don't know, but, <laughs> but here we have uh, this light circle, uh, rising circle case again. Uh, with a body ratio of 0 0.8. Remember this added mass instability, it's something that kicks in when the body becomes lighter than the uh, surrounding fluid. It doesn't matter if you have a stone falling in, in, in air or something. And then I want you to focus on the blue, uh, the blue curve here. So what I show is, as a function of time, I show you that the error we commit in acceleration, the relative error to the relative to the true um, expression we have here. And you can see it's basically constant as it should be, but it has an offset. But it's, it looks much better than what we have with this six stuff rigid body motion uh, library that we have in open foam. So the first one here, the, the yellow one is, you see that this is a signature of these, uh, of the added mass instability, these wild uh, jumps up and down. And uh, can we improve it by increasing the number of outer corrections, which is a painlessly expensive operation? Well, we can sort of squeeze the acceleration or the squeeze the oscillations in, but we, we don't get rid of them. But we do with float stepper. Now regarding this offset, of course, that annoyed me. So I tried to investigate various things to see what, what could be the cause of it. And I end up finding that actually in my simulations, I use an outer rim. It's not an infant domain, obviously, but I have an outer rim, which is 40 uh, radii of the circle away. Um, if, if I increase that to 60 or 80, then this offset is reduced. So it's actually not, I don't think it's an error. I think it's simply a matter of the body slightly feeling that it's in a finite domain, not in an infinite domain. So this is pretty promising, um, but, it's, um, but it's all in 1D and we need stuff in, three, in 3D. So, um, a lot of the work we've been doing is to try to um, generalize this concept to six degrees of freedom. That has taken a long time. Now we have complicated coupling between the rotational and the translational degrees of freedom. Um, I don't have time to go into all the details here. I'm happy to tell you about it after, uh, after the session. But essentially, the concept is the same. We do a zero acceleration um, time step to get the zero force. And then we take not one, but a number of, of uh, virtual time steps to populate our six by six matrix, added mass matrix. So I'm just gonna happily uh, jump over this. And uh, this is a teaser for anyone who would like to see it, uh, uh, talk about it afterwards. 
Um, so we've implemented this in OpenFoam and got uh, quite sweaty, <laughs> but um, but but this is uh, this is basically implemented now, and uh, we've come up with this really nice little test case, which is uh, uh, as an elliptic uh, body moving along uh, the x-axis and then uh, rotating. If it's in an infinite ideal fluid, then it should just move um, in indefinitely like this, wiggling back and forth. You can see the theoretical black uh, curve it should follow here. That's from the Kirchhoff-Kelvin equations. Uh, so we have something nice to compare with. Uh, and this is a nice case because we, we get this coupling uh, between the translational and the rotational degrees of freedom. And you can see here the float step, but does a pretty good job in doing this. Now, uh, this is this is uh, this simulation is to support that we can do this with zero acceleration. Oh, sorry, with zero body mass. So look, look it says zero mass here. So this is a zero mass body. There's no gravity, of course, pulling it upwards. Um, but that is just to emphasize that nowhere in the code do we take a force and divide it by a body mass. Uh, we have this if other that we divide by body mass plus added mass. And therefore, it works even for zero mass. I don't know how re uh, relevant that is to engineering application, but at least it's a way to show uh, this sort of good stability here. And of course, we've tried to do um, mesh refinements on this case um, with, with various meshes here. I show the, uh, the, X -X, uh, the X component, the Y component, and the orientation of this elliptic body as a function of time for three different uh, mesh resolutions and you can see it converges nicely to the to the black uh, theoretical solution so that's very nice all um but this is this is an infinite ideal fluid uh and actually the added mass that we continuously calculate for this for this particular body it doesn't change with time what's really getting interesting that's when we start to get uh when we have a body that's near a boundary or near a free surface like for instance, here we have a wave flume with waves generated here on the left and a body floating freely. And then it's hit by a, a big uh, focused wave. And as the surface of the water changes and even the, we have green water on the body, the added mass of the body will change because of this change in the, in the surface um, shape. So we need to continuously calculate the added mass uh, in, this, in this kind of uh, simulations. And um, we have done that um, in our, and we do that in our float stepper algorithm. Um, and we have validated, we, we actually, it's difficult to find really good validation data, but luckily as part of the float step project, we got a physical model test made in, at DHI with this Tetra Spa uh, concept. Um, so it's Siddiq Aliyah from DTU who, who did these simulations. Uh, so again, uh, a wave maker boundary condition here. He also implemented more dyne coupling with the uh, with the float step by algorithm, so we can get some realistic more li mooring lines. Um, and and it seems to work pretty well. Um, so here I show you the search. So that's back and forth, heave up and down, uh, and pitch of this uh, tetra spa, um, showing experiments in black and float step results in uh, this. Uh, orangeish uh, color. And mind you, this, this is it's not a perfect match, but we also have the complication that we have mooring lines where we need to adjust the parameters uh, going into their stiffness and, and, and uh, other parameters. So, um, so with that in mind, I think these are pretty promising preliminary results. Um, so with that, I just wanna say uh, that in summary, we have, come up with this concept, which is a new way of coupling rigid bodies and uh, fluid, uh, we call it float stepper. It's, um, we think it solves the added mass instability period, um, but that's up for you to test. And you can do that by going in. I just, this morning, I got it uh, uploaded to GitHub. So you can go in there and, and uh, give it a try. But mind you, this is bleeding edge, uh, meaning that you should expect, and I also expect you to, to report whichever uh, box you, you find in the code. I hope this is sort of uh, the start of uh, uh, some good collaborations. Um, at least I'm very interested in hearing how you uh, work with the uh, fluid uh, or rigid bodies and, uh, and to what extent this is a nuisance to you, these uh, atom mass instabilities. So thank you for the, atten the attention. And this is just the float stepper, uh, sorry, the, the Tetra Spa um, concept 
with real people standing next to the quay just to show you the size of these fantastic uh, structures. Thank you very much.